we're going to paint our Rat and Weave Easter tear tray. The first thing I do is either get a piece of paper and lay it out on your surface, or um, you can just open up the box that your um, kit came in, and that would work as well. You just need something that you can dab your paint on. When I start my tear trays, I like to separate my pieces by the colors that I will paint. So I have my, my green pieces over in this corner, my coral pieces up here, and the pieces that I plan to put white, paint white over in this corner. Um, I've also separated the pieces that I kept this natural wood color. I really liked the look that that brought to, um, I felt like it complemented these colors really well. So in case you were wondering, I did not paint those pieces. Let's go ahead and start with our coral pieces. I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze some paint directly onto my paper. You're going to take one of the wedges, dab a little bit in the paint, dab until you get all the excess off, and very lightly dab your pieces to paint. If you use light coats and you're not like squishing it down, and then you kind of start more in the middle and then work your way to the edges, that will keep your edges nice and dark. So you don't have to spend time sanding the edges if you get bugged by seeing paint. Um, you don't have to worry about these little etching because this is just a guideline. So you don't have to worry about covering that with paint because you're still gonna be able to see it enough to know where to lay your pieces. I'm just gonna finish this bigger piece. Then I'll show you how I paint the smaller pieces in case this is your first tear tray set. And then I'm gonna pause and finish before coming back to assemble. This kit is great if this is um, your first kit or if um, you're just kind of running low on time because it's pretty quick. But then the weave pattern that the laser cut out makes it look a lot fancier, but actual paint time is pretty fast. So this is the first piece done. Um, I will go ahead and do two coats on this. Um, if you do two light coats, you're gonna get a much better finish than just clumping the pieces on, or the paint on, sorry. Okay, there are two things that you need to do when you're doing these little tiny letters. So for instance, the H, it looks very similar front and back, but it might, oops, as I drop it into the paint, but it might um, have to be a certain way in order to cover the etching. So I like to just basically dry fit it over to make sure that I'm painting the correct side. So if you can't tell, so I know that that would cover the etch complete. So I know to paint this side. Um, the A's, it's pretty easy to know which side because the skinny side goes on this side. But I have had times where I've painted my letters and then had to go back and repaint because I painted the wrong side. So, okay, I use my tweezers for these small pieces. I'm not going to pick it up, otherwise the piece will just shoot out of the tweezers. You basically just squeeze the side and kind of hold it down. And same thing, dab, get off all the excess, and then just very lightly dab up and down. And just knowing that it doesn't have to be full coverage on your first go around because every single color I plan on painting two coats just so that they have a nice even coverage and not clumpy and runny. Okay, I'm just going to complete this. Um, I'm going to do that with the white, the sage, and the coral, and then we'll come back when it's time to put some little details on these eggs. I'll show you how I did that, and then we'll put our kit together. Okay, I still have a couple wet spots with paint, so I'm just gonna be careful around those. Um, if you wanna save yourself some, <laughs> some dabbing time um, on these white pieces, because I knew there was gonna be a frame, 
I just got really close to the edge without actually hitting the edge because then I don't have to worry about any paint on my sides. And then kind of the same thing with this square. And I even left this whole middle out because I knew this was going to be glued on top. So there was really no point in having to dab, dab, dab right there. Okay, so for the eggs, um, I sent you with this toothpick with the flat top. All I did to make it look more like um, a robin egg is I dipped very, very lightly into the white paint. And then I just randomly did dots around the side. And I just kept dabbing until the paint was gone, basically. And then the next one, there was really no rhyme or reason to it. Am I on the camera? I hope so. Okay, and that is how I did the little robin egg. And then I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna do just a few more on this one. This one looks a little light on dots. And then I'm gonna set them aside to dry. Okay, let's start putting things together. So. I would recommend moving everything out of the way, but my table is full of things, so I'm not going to be able to push this. Um, let's glue, let's, you know what? Let's do the frame first. So um, I did not distress the white background, but you can by all means do that. So. I, I don't know if you could tell from the picture, but I distressed this piece, I distressed my lettering, um, and I distressed around the edges. So I sent you with a rougher sandpaper. The purple sandpaper is a lot finer, so that's more of a finishing sandpaper. If you ordered other kits, you will have um, purple sandpaper in there. And basically what I use that for is I would... Um, do like one coat of the white and then I would very, very lightly sand and that just makes it really smooth for the next coat of paint. This is rougher, it's more of a distressing sandpaper. So that's what I sent you with this project. Okay, so first things first, never ever ever open your super glue over any painted pieces just in case it spills out. Okay, this one did not the last time I opened it started leaking like crazy okay so I am going to put very little around um, or like squeeze it very very lightly I'm gonna try to stay in the middle and then just go around it's gonna take me a minute to start it because I barely or I very very lightly squeeze because I don't want it to Um, just flooding out. Okay. And then I'm going to start on the bottom and then make sure that the top sides are also before I actually press down. There we go. And then hold. If it's not like, if it doesn't feel warped at all, all your pieces feel flat, then you only have to hold it down for a few seconds. But with these frames, I always hold it down for a little bit longer just to make sure that every side sticks down. And then you know what? Let's um, stick with this piece. So I am just going to take my sandpaper and I'm not gonna push down super hard because I don't want a ton of paint coming off. And you can always go back and sand more, but if you take off too much, then you have to repaint. 
I want to mainly concentrate like on the edges. And then maybe a little bit extra in the middle. It kind of turns it this nice little orangey color. I really like it. So to stress as much as you want, I'm going to take a little bit off the top and bottom so I can see a little bit of the wood through. I don't want this to be too distressed, but enough to know that you did try to distress it. Okay. And then I am just going to put a circle or a spiral, I guess, of super glue. And then I'm going to make it, I'm eyeballing it, but I'm gonna make it as straight as possible. I'm just trying to eyeball Easter and have it be straight with the bottom frame. And then call that good. Okay, now for these letters, because they're so tiny, you can go ahead and hold it and try to get little bits of super glue in there. But what I like to do is, let's move this out of the way. I like to put a little bit of super glue onto my paper and then I hold just the very top edge and I dip a little bit into the super glue, dip the excess off onto the side and then line it up with the edge. And these little pieces you don't really need to hold down at all. Dip, dip. And I like to go in order. And then it looks like the super glue is starting to dry out. So we'll just add more. Even though it looks wet, it soaked into this paper pretty good. that the tell of the E is covering the etching. You don't want that to show through. Same with the A. And the S, whether it's this way or this way, sometimes matters. So with S's, I always put them, line them up with the etching before I glue to make sure that I'm putting them down correctly. Okay, I probably need a little bit more super glue. And then dip, dip. You could use the tweezers for this as well. I just don't feel like I have as much control when I'm using the tweezers. I tend to pinch too hard and then <laughs> the letters go rocketing across the room. So it probably is a little off, but I got it in time. It did. Yes. Okay. Now let's go ahead. And I'm going to save our tag for later just because um, I can show you how to do the beads okay so this is much thinner so same thing i'm gonna go as light as i can and it's okay if you if super glue doesn't hit every single piece as long as there's not too many gaps i am hardly squeezing it all i'm mainly using the super glue that's on the tip of the, um, well, just on the tip. I don't know what else to say. And same thing, before I press down, I'm going to make sure that it's as close to the edge as possible. And then hold for just a couple seconds. Okay. Now, same thing with these letters. 
I'm just going to go ahead and spill some super glue out with cotton. I didn't hit every single part of cotton because it's just a small letter or a small word. So you don't have to have every single inch covered in glue. Oh. I was wondering if I had enough glue on there. Okay. There might be. Nope, it's still. We're good. I thought it had possibly dried out. And sometimes I just pick it up by the workers <laughs> to make sure that it's stuck. Okay, farms. I'm just going to do the F the middle and then the end. There we go. Put that down and then we have carrot patch. And then once, once the letters are done, the most tedious part is finished because the rest of it will go very quickly. I don't think I don't think I usually have this many letters on my tear tray sets. I'm trying to remember my past months. It didn't feel like maybe maybe I just have a short term memory. Okay. I hope that you can see well. I can't really see my phone screen. It's so bright today. I need to set up a filming spot in my house, but I think I've said that every month for a year. And I just have not. hair underneath that A that I'm going to have to tweeze out. Okay, when I'm finished with this, I'm going to make sure that it's completely dry, but I did distress the lettering on this piece, but you don't want to do that until I'm going to make sure that this H, I know which way to do it. Um, you don't want to distress the letters until they are for sure set. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do the banner and then come back to that piece. So the only, because these pieces you didn't have to paint, um, the laser did the work for you. Um, you only have to paint, glue down these two eggs. That was probably way too much glue for what was needed. And that was not enough glue. Okay. I'm putting them together because I'm just trying to, I mean, it's going to be on a banner, so it doesn't need to be perfect, but I try to keep them somewhat in a straight line. So I, I set my banner up like this so I could kind of line the bottom up. But it doesn't need to be exact because they're not even going next to each other. So, okay, let's do, I think we can distress now. Where did I put, oh, right here. Okay, so first on the banners, all I did was I only distressed the very edges of mine. You can distress more. If you wanted even the middle, you should distress that before gluing your egg down. But I just did the edges on mine. Cause like I say, mine, I did not do a heavy distress. I just wanted it to seem 
a little rustic because I thought that really fit in with the, the weave. But um, if you wanted it to go heavy, then by all means, I did not distress my eggs. Um, maybe I did actually around the corners. So since I have coral color on this side, I'm going to go ahead and do the green on this one just so I don't have any color transfer. And I'm just going to very lightly, especially around my spots because I don't want to distress those off. And that just gave, gives it a nice rounded appearance, I think. Okay, now, as long as your piece is perfectly um, dry, this you want to be very, very careful with because you don't want to be breaking off any letters or anything. So I, I just very, very lightly went over. I'm hardly pushing at all because I did not want any broken pieces, especially since it's already glued down. And then I turned it over and especially with this cursive because it's a lot more delicate. Just slow and soft. And you don't, you honestly don't need to distress it at all. I just thought it looked cute. see some of the just on the edges just very lightly okay let's do our tag first thing I'm just gonna hurry and hit the edges really quickly I did not distress anywhere else I mean you could just do a quick sand over but the egg kind of covers most of it so I wasn't worried about that. Okay, so this is just a decoration for the top of the tag. You can either, you can put it on or you can leave it. Um, either way works. I just positioned it over, my head was probably in the way. I just positioned it over the hole because that's where we're going to be stringing our beads. And then on this egg, you do not need to like glue every single section of the egg. So I'm just going to pretty much do like a cross or a tic-tac-toe, I guess I should say. And um, if you're not sure which side is the front and the back, just go with the smoothest, the smoothest side on the front. I sanded the front of the weave. So whatever feels the smoothest, that is the front. Okay, now let's do our tag, I, or the beads. I'm going to move this paper because I don't want to get any um, paint or super glue into my paper, okay, or into my twine. There are three sizes for the tag. There was a really small piece, a medium piece, and then this really long piece. So take the really long piece. This is gonna be the tassel. And then I hold, okay, I'm gonna actually lift this up because I can't really see the thing at all and I wanna make sure that I am doing this correctly. So I put the end at the bottom of my palm and then I just start winding around my hand. And then I pinch towards, I'm gonna pull that piece down because I don't want that on the top of my tag or tassel. Sorry, there's one piece that's giving me grief. Okay, 
So I pinch more towards the top and then I'm gonna take the smallest piece of twine and I'm gonna leave a tail about that big because you're gonna use it to tie off. So just have enough to tie off. And then I'm going to just wrap it really, really tight just a few times and then tie it in a knot. Um, I shouldn't have capped my super glue. I just tie it one time at first and then I get a pencil. I'm gonna use a scalpel because I don't have a pencil here. The pencil's way better though. My computer right here, but I have no pencil. I might need to pause. I'm gonna pause really quick. Okay, I got my pencil. So I'm just going to weave it through all of the um, loops. And then once you make sure that you hit all the loops, because if you miss any, when you pull this, it's gonna pull that loop all the way down. So then I just kind of lightly, just in case you accidentally do that, but also firmly tug these pieces down just so that it's even. It's gonna just look, they don't have to be perfect, but you just wanna kind of clean it up a little bit. Okay. And then I slide this part that I tied as far up as I possibly can. And then that's when you either, one of two ways, you can either tie this in a knot or actually what I do is I just put a little dab of super glue right where these, can you see it, right where these threads cross to hold it in place. And then once the super glue dries, I actually trim these pieces all the way, but you wanna wait till it dries so that you don't super glue your scissors together. Okay, then I take the pencil out because that is what you're looking for. You need a hole all the way through for when we thread the twine. Oh my gosh. Let me pause again and go get some scissors. I was so proud of myself. I thought I had everything I needed this time. <laughs> nope. Better look next month. Okay, then you're just going to trim the bottom pieces, all the closed loops so that now they're open. And then I just clean them up so that they're mostly even. Again, this is like a farmhouse tassel so they don't have to be perfect but you do want them somewhat even. Okay, then, this is dry now so I can trim these pieces off. Okay, now what you're going to want to get is a really small piece of scotch tape or painter's tape. This will make your life so much easier. I just want a small piece. I get two because you're gonna take that medium piece, it's about 18 inches long, and you are going to oh, not tape the pieces together. Um, put that on the end. This is going to help you when you're threading through the beads because otherwise this is going to fray and it's gonna be really annoying. And I'm gonna do both ends and I'll show you why. Well, I guess you'll see why. Okay. Okay. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and you don't need a whole bunch extra. Just tie a knot around the tag. So then get your beads and start stringing. Okay, first, the reason I put tape around this end, you could technically just cut that piece off. I usually just put tape around it because then this will also kind of stabilize it a little bit. And then the first few beads, I'm just going to also um, thread that bottom through. So this will probably be two beads and then done, maybe three. So go all the way down and then push up through. 
through that bead. Again, if you would prefer to just cut it off, I just feel like this helps so that it doesn't unravel if your knot wasn't super tight. But if you can see the tape through and you just want to take it off, that's totally fine. You could cut it off after it goes through the first bead even, and then that would stabilize it plenty. Okay. Hi, Nancy. That's my dog. Okay, once it's done, then you're going to take that little hole that you made with your pencil. And this is so hard <laughs> to video and demonstrate because I almost need so many hands. Okay, so I put my tassel as close to my beads as I can get it. And then I just loop around and tie a knot as I hold my tassel close to my beads because if there's a huge like space then it's just gonna look kind of silly with your tassel floating out in midair and if it takes you a couple tries then that's okay so mine you can see how it still has some flex in it but my tassel was super close to my beads if that makes any sense if it takes you a couple tries that's a hundred percent fine I'm just gonna tie another knot and get it as close to as possible and then I'm going to take this piece and just start threading it down my beads. I'm not going to go this whole entire length because that would be very excessive, but I am going to go down um, probably three beads. And that will also keep your tassel closer to your beads as well. If you have a better way of making your tassel, by all means do that. I am not a professional. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my beads as much as I can while I cut that way when the beads go down, it's hidden. And then you will have your cute little farmhouse tag. And then the same thing with your, with your banner. Um, that's what the... I, I usually do three feet because I feel that covers most tear trays that I've seen. Um, go ahead and put tape on the ends. And then all I do is thread from front to back and then back to front. Um, or you can do the other way if you want to see the twine across the front of the banner. There's no right or wrong. Um, and then you are finished. If you have any questions at all... Please let me know. I'm trying to think. Did I forget anything? I think we're good. Let me know if you have any questions.